not a sexual relationship. Charlie and Dennis had a relationship, not just a follower. I mean, Dennis was much more involved with the group than he ever admitted. I know. I, I mean, deeply involved. He was practically a member of it. They had a sexual relationship, and Dennis was a very troubled, confused guy. Apparently, he'd been raped by a black man when he was younger and had all kinds of conflicts about that. And so, really? Yeah. You know, Bugliosi kept trying to get Dennis Wilson to testify, and they kept putting them on tour so he wouldn't have to. Right. And basically, Nick Grillo, who was the Beach Boys' financial agent made a deal with Bugliosi, let Greg Jacobson be the spokesman for the Beach Boys. We don't want the Beach yeah. Boys to get dragged into this. And so Greg took the bullet and lied, you know, and tried to minimize the contact between the Beach Boys and Charles and the group. Charlie told me that the first time he heard of Sebring was from Brian Wilson, personally. Brian Wilson had a man-to-man -man talk with Charlie, trying to get him together for a recording session. And he said, you gotta slicken up your act. You gotta look better. You should go get a haircut from my barber, Jay Sebring. He told me this really odd story that at that moment, when he said Jay Sebring, they both heard a bell ring. And both looked around like, what the hell was that? And only a year later, that was a year before the murders, Charlie thought about that incident. I mean, you've probably heard there are recordings of Brian and Charlie singing together in the Beach Boys archive. There's a 16-minute tape that Al Jardine played recently that has Charlie with Brian improvising on a synthesizer, and they're singing together. One interesting thing, a little bit of Charlie's music came out on a Beach Boys release, I think accidentally. A recent box set of the 2020 album has some unreleased things. Yeah. There's one part on it that has very distinctive acoustic guitar strumming, and the lyrics, it's clearly a Charlie song. Uh -huh. And some people connected with Brian Wilson's entourage confirmed to a, a friend of mine, Ben Gorecki, who knows them and Robbie Krieger and all those people, yeah. that yeah, that they, they put out a little bit of that and they didn't credit the guitarist, but it is actually a, a song Charlie recorded with the Beach Boys, so that's a whole other aspect of what was covered up. The Beach Boys entourage acts like, oh, we threw this parasite out in 1968. Of course, Dennis was still praising Charlie and talking about him in English rock magazines and saying we're going to record him, we're going to put out a record with him and talking about how much he admired him in 1969 and they were still deeply in touch. They had an intervention. Well, Nick Grillo basically said if you keep getting involved with this group, we're going to put you in an insane asylum and he was controlling his money because Dennis was giving his money to Charlie and of course you know at that time, the Beach Boys were in dire straits financially. They had done this tour with the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi that nobody went to, yeah. where half the tour was Maharishi and then them playing, and it got terrible yeah. reviews. And the Maharishi left him in the middle of it to do a film in Israel. Right. You know? I think that's why Dennis was so receptive when he got together with Charlie, because Charlie was more real than the Maharishi, because the Maharishi was just giggling. And as Al Jardine said, the only one who made money on the tour was the florists. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is an important part of the dynamics, is that Charlie was the replacement for the Maharishi. I mean, they were always looking for a spiritual father figure. They can pretend that they didn't think Charlie was it, but they did think the yeah. Maharishi was a phony and this guy is real. And of course, then they backpedaled after he was arrested. Rudy kept saying, I had sex with Dennis. He kept bragging. I have hours and hours of it. 
Rudy Altabelli, according to Bob Esty, had this Velvet Mafia, they call them, the gay secret world at Cielo Drive. And so Dennis and Rudy Altabelli had a relationship, Charlie had a relationship, and I don't know if this is true or if it was Altabelli just being bitchy and vicious, he claimed that Tex and Sebring had a relationship and that there was real hatred and spite between them that went way beyond just a drug deal. So I can't confirm that. That's the only source for it. But Bob Esty said that a stoned and drunk Rudy Altabelli told him that. Bugliosi and Helter Skelter and other of these books, they reveal a little tiny detail to cover up a whole bunch of other stuff. Rudy Altabelli was especially cagey. Um, oh yeah, well, as I've explained, he had plenty to be cagey about. Cagey. But it's interesting that he admitted to you that he had this relationship with Dennis. Yeah. He was a very nasty person, as you probably yeah. could tell. Yeah. I mean, he was a bitchy, mean-spirited person who had nothing good to say about anybody. And he, yeah. he ended up alienating everyone he knew with his uh, poisonous attitude. Um, he said he liked Charlie, though. <laughs> yes, well, they worked together. He mm -hmm. liked Charlie very much, and Charlie liked him. I think, yeah. see, Altabelli is forgotten, but think about it. He is the bridge between the Melcher residency and the Polanski residency. He's the witness to Tex and Charlie meeting Sharon Tate and getting to know these people through Melcher and through Dennis Wilson. He watched the whole story, and he is really the connection to it all. And he's been totally like, just made into this minor figure on the side. Yeah. This story that Bugliosi forced Altabelli to tell in court, that Manson came there once in March of 69 and asked, where's yeah. Terry Melcher? You, yeah. you know that's complete bullshit. You can see why it was incorporated just to make, all right, they met but they didn't really know each other, but that was a cover-up of how deeply they knew each other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think Altabelli is the key to it all. Mm -hmm.